and a very good afternoon. Uh, my name's uh, David Johnson. Um, I'm the principal RF engineer for uh, B2 Space, which is a, a small startup in, uh, in South Wales. Um, I'm also, I also hold the amateur radio call sign uh, G4DPZ. Um, some of my amateur radio colleagues may be filming this. We were trying to set up a live stream across our um, uh, geostationary communication satellite, but I'm not sure if it's going to happen. If, if people are watching, a very good afternoon to know. Um, I just hope things are going to go well in this. If my mouse will work for me, which it doesn't want to be to do. Here we go. I hope it all goes well. Um, I come from a background of uh, software engineering for about um, 40 years or so. Um, I've been involved on the periphery of the uh, UK Space Agency for more years than I care to remember. Um, I'm also involved with uh, an organisation called AMSAT UK, which uh, designs, develops and launches um, small satellites of the sort of uh, one centimetre cube size. I go back to the same age as uh, Professor Sir Martin Sweeting, when we both had either had hair or we had hair colour. Um, so I've been doing this for, for over 50 years, uh, either as an amateur or more lately as a professional. Uh, I, keep quite, I keep trying to retire, but people keep headhunting me. B2 Space. Um, like all companies, they've got to have a strap line. And it's, uh, I'll let you read that, I'm not going to read it out. Um, basically, we're trying to offer reasonably cheap launches to a near-Earth orbit using an extremely unusual mechanism for doing it. About uh, four or five years ago, our uh, directors were watching a TV program, watching um, Felix Baumgartner with his uh, parachute jumping from um, nearly 39,000 meters. Um, with the sort of, I think, probably a couple of glasses of wine inside them, they said, if you can do that, why can't we do it as well? Um, instead of uh, him jumping out of a balloon, why can't we carry a rocket to that sort of uh, altitude? And, uh, and launch it from there. The image on the left-hand side is obviously Alex, is, uh, well, is um, Felix, um, and the one on the right-hand side is one of our test rigs uh, going up about um, about two years ago. We've got three programs: uh, Calibri, Hawk, and Blue Jay. Calibri is the primary mission which, which we're leading up to, which is getting all the funding. Basically, it's the one to launch a rocket suspended from a balloon, hence the name, the Roku. Um, we've been funded, funded by a variety of uh, funding sources, uh, development agencies, local governments, both in, in the UK and in Europe, uh, and from venture capital as well. Hawk uh, is our flying lab. Um, we invite industry to come and uh, put their small uh, platforms on our launch vehicle to take it up to the stratosphere so it can be used for tech demo uh, and prototyping without the uh, full cost of uh, a small low, low earth orbit um, system. We also have Blue Jay. Blue Jay is one where we talk to universities and guide them through the development of a platform, a small platform, which we then fly for them to get the results. The Calibri system, this is, uh, excuse the image, this is a bit of PR, it doesn't quite look like that yet. Um, it's the idea of the rocket and the balloon, what you can't see above it is the, um, is the balloon. This is the idea for the three-stage solid booster, uh, which will take things to a low Earth orbit. Um, the system you can see, which is suspended from, we call the gondola in the same way that most um, balloons would have a gondola suspending from them, usually carrying people. So we've, we've stuck to the same name, so we always, use the, we always use the term gondola. Why did we do it? We want to have a flexible, reliable, low-cost system 
The idea being that we, instead of the normal launch capacity um, for a rocket, which involves the uh, many stages to get it to the uh, low Earth atmosphere, you know, stage one, two, and three, all of which are extremely bulky systems, and in terms of weight of their own body, the amount of fuel they're carrying, the amount of plumbing on board, if we can lift it to, uh, the, to near Earth before we even launch, we've saved all that cost. It's lighter, it's more efficient, and it's, it's a more environmentally friendly. We're not chucking out lots and lots of kerosene into the atmosphere. We're doing a lot of work as well as the uh, ballooning. We do work on rocketry. Um, we're trying to use uh, not quite zero emission, but uh, low emission uh, fuels uh, using hybrid rockets. So it's a, it's a mixture of a, a, a propellant and, uh, and an oxidizer of some kind. But we're using some interesting um, uh, components to go into that. Part of, we've got several things we've got to consider when, we, when we're launching a balloon and with suspending a rocket from it. Predominantly, you know, getting it up there is easy. We just pump it full of helium. The problem then comes, once we've got it up there, how do we point the rocket in the right direction? Because the balloon might just go up and start spinning. So we have uh, one of our um, pieces of work that we're doing is actually to be able to point the rocket just before launch, which is part of our intellectual property, which I won't go into here, of course. Um, we've also got trajectory control. We've got to know where the balloon's going. Uh, as it goes up through the atmosphere, it will go through several uh, wind layers, uh, if, including if we go high enough, we'll get stuck in the jet stream and go across the Atlantic uh, or some other place. So we have to be very careful in terms of uh, vertical navigation as well as horizontal navigation. We have to have launch control systems um, for safing, for arming, for firing, for tearing down the rocket, for suspending the rocket should anything happen. Um, we're subject to many, many uh, safety restrictions through the um, CAA in the UK. And more interestingly, the uh, maritime agencies as well. What comes up comes down. You, 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 can see, you can see virtually the size of that balloon, and it becomes a large jellyfish when it hits the surface of the, uh, of the water. Um, for the, so for the maritime agencies, we have to guarantee that we recover the rocket, the gondola, and the um, balloon itself. We do a lot of high altitude operations as well as the um, testing of the raccoon. Um, we have, we've got uh, several friends who've uh, helped us uh, in, in this regard. Um, there is a significant high altitude ballooning uh, uh, community worldwide and specifically in the UK. So we've been talking to them and the, um, one of their um, contingent has been helping us with uh, some of the uh, tracking software. A lot of things go into the development of uh, something like this. And this is just a short version of uh, all the things we've had to go through to uh, bring us up to um, a reasonable state for the um, being allowed to fly. We can't, we can't just fly. We can't be, we're not a small helium balloon. We're something quite significant. So there's something like uh, 20 elements there. We've had to prove to the um, Civil Aviation Authority and the other agencies that we're fit to fly. We can't fly the large balloon, of course, for it straight away. So we've got to go through several uh, levels of iteration. We've got several routes to this. Um, the image on the left-hand side is um, a static launch uh, of a solid rocket um, launch from our test gondola. Um, the gondola is basically fixed. It's actually not doing its... Um, tracking for, for position. We were, we were testing the avionics and to make sure the thing didn't, damn thing didn't flip over when we launched. Um, we were fortunate that the drone operator we were using, because we have to be well away from this thing when it launches, actually co caught the moment when the rocket actually left the tube. People say, is that Photoshop? No, it isn't. That's exactly how it was on the day. 
we were at uh, Llanbedr uh, Airfield in uh, Wales. Uh, we'd organised a safe area in terms of uh, vertical altitude and uh, horizontal range. As I say, what comes up must come down. Um, so we were very, very fortunate that um, Lambeda Airfield is also the uh, Welsh Space Agency's uh, test site. Trying to get a, even a small balloon uh, launched uh, in the UK is, uh, is challenging because the CAA have something called a NOTAM, which is Notice to Airmen, which have to be issued about 28 days in advance of the launch. We're fortunate because we're a commercial company, we can actually invoke them fairly quickly. One of our launch opportunities is in northern Scotland, in Shetland, from the um, Scotland uh, space site. The weather at this time of year in Scotland is not good. Um, we're fortunate that our uh, chief exec and the board um, are Spanish, uh, uh, and we have uh, some interesting connections um, through our, one of our other directors into the uh, Spanish Armada, which is the Spanish Navy. They were doing some exercises off the Canaries about two weeks ago, um, and through various negotiations, they offered us a frigate, on the back of which you can see uh, one of our test balloons, and on the back of the uh, boat itself is our test rig with our gondola and one of our rockets, which, is gonna, which, fly, which flies off the, uh, off the back of the boat. It's a, it's a small organisation. I'm, 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 no, I'm notionally the principal RF engineer. But with the grey hair, you can probably tell I've done a lot of things. Um, but my main role is um, three roles, basically. TTNC, which is basically telecommunications and commanding of the, both the rocket and the gondola. The gondola avionics in terms of tracking it, in, in terms of vertical tracking and horizontal tracking. We've got to find all the bits. We've got to find the balloon. We've got to find the gondola. We've got to find the rocket. So in real time, as close as we can get, we're tracking it through GPS and, and other, uh, other forms of uh, communication. We use three, well, we, we predominantly use three mechanisms. Uh, a spot tracker, which has its own uh, constellation of satellites. We use Iridium through rock block. And uh, Dave Ackerman, thank you, Dave, um, has provided us with a LoRa device, which is GPS and LoRa transmission, and we've been extremely happy with that. My, one of my roles at the moment is to, is to actually aggregate all that data so we can get as close as we can once we do a recovery. It's also important for us when we do our high altitude ballooning tests for the um, university platforms in the UK. We can't go too high and we've got to find it. You know, these people have invested money in terms of their um, development, so we've got to go and get it. As I said, we've, we've got a large, a large debt of thanks to the uh, hub community in the UK. This, the image on the uh, top left is of a ground station, um, a UHF and uh, S-band uh, ground station, which I'm involved with uh, dealing with. We have some uh, dealings in academia with the um, University of South Wales. Um, we've, we've basically done a deal with them that they can use our ground station if we can put it on their roof. Um, and other people are going to start using it as well. It, it, it's, it seems to, it's a waste of opportunity just to be tracking our stuff maybe, maybe four or five days a year when the opportunity is there for academia to use it uh, many, many times over. B2 Space itself is a very small company, as I've said. Um, we're about 22 at the moment. When I joined a year ago, there were about 12. Um, so it, it's, 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 it's growing organically at the moment. There will, there will be a step change probably in about six months when we start looking at some of our commercial um, operations. One thing I will say is that we've been very fortunate in that the um, UK Space Agency um, have something called Spin Turn, which is basically um, encourages students to apply for jobs in the space industry. 
uh, UK Space Agency uh, goes out to the UK space industry and just says, you know, we have some funding available for supporting a, one or more students in companies. So the industry bids for this opportunity. We bid this year for three, we put uh, proposals in for three um, projects. UK Space Agency said you can have one of those and we'll fund that in turn for, that, for the period. So we decided that in our own right, well, we'll fund the other two anyway. So we're now in the process of um, doing a triage of all the 150 applications for the um, three positions that we have available to us. I have to say that all the interns we've had over the past four years that have come through the project, we've taken on. Um, we're also pleased to say that a high proportion of those are women. We are, we are very, very proud of that. One of the other things we do, as well as the uh, raccoon uh, development, is some, um, some, some elements of propulsion design. The uh, image on the left-hand side is yet another Spanish connection. Um, it's a standard rocket um, pointing into a blast chamber. So what we were testing here was our arming systems, our saving systems, and our firing systems. It's, it, it's bolted to the ground. It isn't going to go anywhere except in one line. Um, if, you look, if you can see carefully, I'm not quite sure how good the lighting in here is. It went out so fast, you can actually see the thrust diamonds on the back of the, uh, on the, back of the rocket. It was spectacular. Again, the, the second image is uh, our launch control at our um, development from in Merkland Better. And the uh, one on the right-hand side is is a few, few milliseconds after the first one, and it's, it was the launch to, um, to a reasonable height. I won't, I won't say it went perfectly. <laughs> That's all, all these things, uh, the, the, it was a test. We got, the, we got the elements of the firing and testing and safing and launch, and we, and we actually managed to recover the rocket, and the, and the tracking went fairly well. It's a learning experience. We're starting to pick up some commercial customers, either by you, mainly by letters of intent at the moment. Um, one of those who I can't mention is actually doing business with us. Um, again, it's, it's a Spanish company because of our, our connections out there. Um, I can mention Allen Space. Um, Allen Space are the providers of our ground station. Um, we're talking to them about the, the aggregation of um, our ground station into larger networks. We've had a, a reasonable amount of funding over the years since 2016. Uh, as I said, the UK Space Agency have put some money in. We've had other funding from private venture um, and from uh, agencies. Uh, I've mentioned the Wealth Government, and they've, they've provided some funding. Uh, under, under an agency in Spain has also provided a significant amount of funding uh, over the past 18 months. As well as Calibri, I've sort of uh, alluded to the fact that we do um, testing of uh, commercial um, payloads. This is a spin-off of the, of the original Calibri system, and we've called it Hawk. Don't ask me where the names have come from, that's just the name. We use helium balloons, zero pressure balloons, so in terms, of, in terms that they don't pop initially, they'll reach a certain height and then float there until we physically tear them down. We'll have it, we have a strip on the side of the balloon which we basically just pull and it opens the envelope at a, bit, at a given height, which we command. Or uh, if, if, if something's going wrong, we'll tear it down anyway. The um, image below that is a standard um, helium balloon, which is what the um, hub communities use in the UK. That's us on the top of the hill in, uh, in Wales. And that's the team that's uh, carrying the box that's flying it. We do near space testing. Um, customers are commercial. Get them into space. Get them into space quickly. 
We do high altitude system testing. Again, it's for emergencies. It's, it's for looking for fishing, uh, illegal fishing, looking for smart agriculture. And finally, the Blue Jay program, which is the um, program for universities. This, is, this is, was a launch um, about uh, 12 months ago. Students in the, in the hangar putting the bits together, finally, putting it onto our um, launch platform, filling the balloon. Early morning, you can tell very much. And there's a string of balloons in the background. Um, and this is the actual launch, or just before launch. We use a lot of tools and software for the things we do. We do flight safety, we do situation awareness, and we do interesting projects like guided parafoils. Are we okay? Um, things you don't want to do. This isn't us. Um, these are some pictures taken off the internet looking at um, uh, balloons, um, rockets on parachutes, and people running away from launches. And I kid you not, this is actually what this the, the, the video with the with the launch running away is quite spectacular. Uh, I, I'll swear the rocket bounced sideways. Well, that's me. Um, it's been very short and sweet. Um, if you want to find out more, we are at I'll be at the uh, AMSAT tent at the top of the field uh, for today and uh, most of tomorrow. Uh, come talk to me about B2 space and come talk to me about uh, amateur radio satellites. And that's it. Thank you very much.